But once again, migration is in the news. Imagine Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, has said that uh, he is not, uh, not convinced that he will actually stop channel migrants by the next election. has to be by January 2025, more likely a spring or autumn next year. This, as uh, it's believed that more than 800 migrants are landed on British shores on the busiest day of channel crossings this year, yesterday. Uh, this, as the Institute of Public Policy Research, so Tony Blair's favourite think tank, they've uh, published a big report on the asylum intray by 2025 and they're saying that we're looking at an extraordinary amount of money being spent on migrants. We're looking at a bill for more than five and a half billion pounds a year and that's all the way through for five years from the next general election because the backlog of 130,000 awaiting to be processed, 18,000 arriving this year already, means that we are going to be stuck with this cost for a long time to come. Let's talk about all of this with Stephen Wolfe. He's director of the Centre for Migration and Economic Prosperity and joins us once again. Good morning to you, Stephen. Good morning, Julia. Um, I'm wondering if there's ever going to be a day, and I mean this very lovingly, Stephen, where I'm not going to have to say, right, we're going to have to go to Stephen Wolfe to talk to you about the fact the latest hundreds of people arriving on our shores um, and how much we're spending on hotels. You were the one who exposed the huge hotel bill. I mean, people are going, hold on a minute, how much are these you know, two-star, three-star, even four-star hotels costing, and you were the one who exposed how many billions in total it was costing us. Um, it's going to keep going up, and it's going to be for years on end. Yes, it is, because we're just only one part of a very large chain of mass people movement from Africa, the Middle East, uh, and including India too, who want to come here for a better life, as they see yep. it, uh, economically. And the way that they're using it is using the asylum process and the asylum systems across Europe, in the United States and in the UK to achieve their goals. And I've called for a long, long time now that we should have an international convention that changes the UN Refugee Convention to accept that economic migrants should not be allowed to use the system of asylum. Indeed, I, I think you did get something wrong there, Stephen. These are all desperate, desperate people who are all victims <laughs> of war, torture, and are desperately coming here uh, from, oh, checks notes, France. Um, look, this is the thing. We know, we know this, the numbers are only going to get higher. In fact, we're constantly told it's due to climate change they're going to become higher. No, it's a, attempts to stop the third world developing is what's going to make uh, this problem greater. And I've got, I mean, I've got nothing, frankly. As, as long as they're, they're, they're not criminals or they're paying a people smuggler doesn't put you in a, the right boat on that front, although it does get you in the, in the wrong boat on a dinghy crossing the channel. Um, actually, people who want to make a better life for themselves and their families when they live in absolute destitution in other countries, I, I, you know, good for them. The trouble is, um, how many are we going to take? And that's the thing I can never get politicians to answer is, give me a number that you think is the acceptable number. Um, is there anything the government's doing? Bibi Stockholm, Rwanda, um, all the efforts to get play nicey-nicey with the French. Is there anything that is actually making a dent in the numbers who are coming across from France? Well, it's, it's not necessarily making a dent in, in the sense that we're seeing large numbers. Where I am uh, uh, you know, praising the government is actually their international connections now using Europol and other, uh, other nations beyond that to try and track down the people traffickers along the, uh, the smugglers' routes. There is some success in Turkey. There have been up to about 400 uh, charges to individuals this year in France and Europe so far. But the problem with it, Julie, is that a lot of those who are really behind the big gangs have a huge number of worker ants who are willing to help them transport them across the routes from yeah. Afghanistan into Turkey to house them yeah. in Turkey hiding spots until they're able to fund their way or get the debt yeah, levels. They don't, they don't just turn up in Calais from nowhere. No, no, they don't. And, and of course, the, there are huge African uh, slavery, where the old African slavery routes are now literally the African migrant routes coming up into Libya and across those coasts. And, and what's happening now is we, you're getting this uh, almost like a, a, a snowball effect that's getting bigger and bigger. Because as soon as you allow one person to come into a country and settle, they're then deemed to be a family member. And that family member is then able to say, look, I've got another family member who's one of those boats, and that's a reason for them to come in. And that's happening all across Europe as well. So what is it this year? The EU Commission are saying we're going to get about 
350,000 coming up into Italy. Yeah. That's going to spread across to Europe. And what do you make of the calls for us to, you know, share out the number of migrants who arrive in Europe? But we know that even you know, the Poles, they're having a referendum this autumn on this uh, by their right-wing prime minister. So, you know, shall we, shall we share out all the, the migrants who arrive in Italy and in Greece as the EU is, is their edicts are suggesting, well, that, well forcing them to do? Um, do you think we should take what people call our fair share? Well, I, I think we already take a reasonable share. I mean, over 1.25 million people come here through asylum and immigration uh, route since the year 2000. Yes, we're going to take about 80,000 each year. But when you look at in terms of the population, our population's gone up 5 million in just the past 10 years. Yeah. We can see density levels in our big cities in, increasing traffic increasing and so when you allow this distribution this fair share all it means is that you're actually just accepting the principle that you're just going to allow lots of people to leave other countries to come here and we will we be the ones who have to fund it yeah indeed um and and in terms of rishi sunak saying that he doesn't sort of think believes he may not stop channel migrants by the next election i mean <laughs> I mean, exactly. I mean, all reaction the same as mine. You know, hey, you know, with all due respect, Prime Minister, nice thing to suggest, but no one ever thought you were. Yes, I, I don't think anyone would have thought that you'd be able to stop uh, the migrant boat straight away, even if you managed to get Rwanda going, because you need just thousands of places to be able to send them. As yeah. I say, we're going to look around 40,000 so far. Um, that's just coming across on the boats. As we know, they're still coming across on the backs of lorries, trying to get onto ferries too, and 25,000 last year. So we are looking roughly around 80,000 a year. Unless he's got huge spaces in Rwanda and other countries, there's no way you're going to actually get people to stop coming. No, indeed. Stephen Wolf, thank you very much indeed for joining us.